Friday, September 22nd, 2023, and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky faced a cool reception in the House in his appeal for billions of dollars more in aid as Republicans struggle to pass a government spending bill. Alex Miller, Susan Fericio, and Kerry Pickett report a separate $24 billion spending package that President Biden proposed for Ukraine has stalled. Zelensky desperately hopes to secure the U.S. aid to help battle Russian invaders, but the proposal can't become law without House approval. Zelensky's visit to Washington found a much warmer welcome in the Senate and later at the White House. President Biden affirmed the U.S. commitment to helping Ukraine fend off Russia and prepared to announce more military assistance to harden defenses. Fox and News Corporation Chairman Rupert Murdoch is stepping down, appointing his son Lakeland as chairman of both companies. Tom Howe reports the 92-year-old Murdoch announced the shakeup in a company memo. He will pivot into an emeritus role as his 52-year-old son takes over. Born in Australia, Murdoch worked in media throughout his life and purchased 20th Century Fox in the 1980s before leaning into television and launching Fox News in 1996. The General Services Administration says the water supply in at least six federal government buildings is contaminated with the bacterium that causes Legionnaire's disease. Stephen Dynan reports two of the buildings are in Chicago and the others are in Detroit, Nebraska, Utah, and western New York. They are operated by the General Services Administration's Public Building Service. The audit says GSA doesn't require testing in the 5,000 buildings that it leases, although the agency does have a protocol for testing non-potable water in government-owned buildings. It doesn't test potable water systems. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is attempting his third immigration policy reset in just nine months, announcing more troop deployments to the southern border and faster deportation of families. Stephen Diner reports the moves are also to be coupled with an expanded amnesty for hundreds of thousands of Venezuelan migrants and more generous work permits for other illegal immigrants already in the United States. Mayorkas' latest round of changes include more capacity for Customs and Border Protection to hold migrants at the border and an expansion of the Family Expedited Removal Management Program, which aims to deport families that have crossed the border illegally within 30 days. On one hand, the UN General Assembly is unmatched in scale and prestige. On the other hand, critics say the event demonstrates how ineffective and paralyzed the United Nations has become in the 21st century. At the most fundamental level, Ben Wolfgang reports the idea of the UN as an international body capable of halting major wars no longer seems applicable. Leading U.N. member nations now seem directly responsible for starting those wars. Many of the U.N.'s less glamorous but indispensable roles, however, including dispatching peacekeeping forces to troubled countries and overseeing programs to promote multilateral health and education initiatives, would be hard to recreate without a single central body. And finally, Supreme Court justices are set to discuss next week whether to take up appeals from January 6th defendants in the upcoming term. Alex Warrior reports the court is scheduled to consider at least one of a few cases challenging a federal obstruction of justice statute during a private conference on Tuesday. The court's new term opens on October 2nd. At least four of the nine justices would have to vote to review a dispute for oral arguments to be scheduled. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on social media at Watch Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.